The Venezuelan embassy and Bastier St. Kitts, like its counterparts in other countries, have been struggling to pay their bills, including staff due to primarily U.S. sanctions on Venezuela. That country, for several months, has been unable to wire transfer funds to the account of its embassy in St. Kitts because the corresponding banks of local banks in Europe, Canada and the U.S. are rejecting the funds. SK Newsline, while away in Venezuela, spoke to Venezuelan Vice Minister of Caribbean Affairs Raul Lecausi, who confirmed the situation and explained that solutions are being sought to permanently address the problem. Uh, it is true that we have had faced difficulties transferring the money. Uh, it is to have the money some in your account and trying to transfer to, to pay some, account, some accounts uh, and to not be enabled to do it because sanctions is always uh, a, a difficult thing to approach. We have, ha we have working solutions, unfortunately, because of the situation and because every time that we find a solution, they try to uh, block it. Uh, we cannot give you details, but yes, we have uh, our, now our personal and the, the debts that we have in each country are being addressed in properly. Uh, we all obviously are always going to have some delays, but we are currently, because basically we do have the money, we just need to get it there. So we have to find solutions to get the money there. We asked the Vice Minister if Petro Caribe could provide a solution. Absolutely. Some of the solutions that we have found come from that way. Uh, the government, not only in St. Kitts, but in the all Eastern Caribbean countries, have been very helpful trying to uh, help us to, to, to get and these debts and to, to, to our people there to be covered. Cryptocurrency, do you think the Petro, for example, can be a solution to address some of these um, challenges that Venezuela has? It's actually been a solution. It's already been worked well with some countries. We just need, of course, these new ideas. We need to put them uh, formally on the table and, and to start uh, looking for what other solutions we can bring, but definitely is part of the future, is definitely working, and it is going to be a success in the future, yes. Meanwhile, the Vice Minister thanked CARICOM and continued to appeal for their support in the standoff between Venezuela and the U.S. So we always thank uh, not only the, the, in this scenario, but we also have to uh, say that we applaud the role of leadership that Prime Minister Harris has had uh, as chairman of CARICOM. Uh, we're looking forward to go to St. Kitts uh, to the, attend to the intersessional meeting of CARICOM. Even if we're not part of CARICOM, we will be there because we do care a lot about our relationship with the Caribbean. And we say that we need to thank the position, not only that St. Kitts, but CARICOM has had, and going to New York, going to Uruguay, looking for solutions because in the region you understand the risk of another mm, different approach with the Venezuelan situation. Crippling economic sanctions have continued to pile pressure on President Nicolas Maduro and his government, who has been accused by the U.S. and several in the international community as a dictator. International opponents of President Maduro have thrown their support behind opposition leader Juan Guaido, who has declared himself as interim president. There is a scarcity of food and medicines, and whatever food is available is very expensive due to hyperinflation. On the weekend, clashes erupted at the Venezuelan and Colombian borders as Venezuelans seeking to bring humanitarian aid delivered by the U.S. in Colombia were blocked by Venezuelan military troops stationed at the border. President Maduro has repeatedly accused the U.S. government of using the humanitarian aid as a political ploy to justify military intervention in Venezuela and has since closed their borders with Colombia and Brazil. Maduro has also sought to expel Colombian diplomats from the country, breaking off ties with one of their closest South American neighbors. I'm Andre Huey, reporting for SKN Newsline.